to you live with this very special broadcast tonight and uh, I hope and pray that each and every one of you had a great 4th of July that nothing that could have caused you any difficulty arose. You know we have over the history of our nation had various presidential administrations from the very beginning of our constitutional republic but never ever has a governmental administration lingered as it has with the Obama And uh, that show is not political, it's more of a personal nature in regards to an individual who's fighting not just the legal system, but a corrupt legal system. And uh, I don't know how many of you heard various governmental agencies that are protecting people, but in this instance, it's not protecting anyone. A nice guest is a gentleman by the name of, and I do hope I pronounced the last name correct. I believe it's Marie. Yes, sir. Um, 
But anyway, I'm going to bring him in here and we'll get started with tonight's show. But folks, uh, I want you to listen to tonight's show with an open mind. And uh, don't think for a minute that it can't happen to you, to me, to your next door neighbor, to your best friend, to your, any member of your family, because it can. So folks, with that being said, I'm going to bring my uh, guest, Robert Marie, in. Robert, how are you doing, doing, sir? I'm doing fine. Uh, I'd like to start off by thanking you for your service to our country. Uh, that means a lot to an individual such as myself, especially uh, my with pleasure. all the things that have gone. My sincere pleasure. Now, you know, Robert, uh, you know, don't know the whole story of your situation, but uh, I would like for you, in your own words, to really tell your story so that way the people can hear what you have to say. So go ahead, sir. Okay, um, I used to take notes about all this, and I found that uh, just trying to do it from memory serves it, uh, the whole deal best. And so we'll get started now with uh, what occurred when it started back in 1995. It was October 23rd, and the world's largest paper manufacturer in Bugaloo, Louisiana, released the uh, toxic cloud. Traveled for 20 minutes and stopped over our home. We lived in an area uh, somewhat secluded from everybody, out in a little village of uh, Angie, Angie, Louisiana. Uh, it's about 16 miles uh, north of Bugaloosa, actually northwest of there. And so, uh, early October, I'm getting a little feedback there. I don't know if you can do anything about it. Uh, early October, uh, the paper mill had an abundance of uh, a chemical called DMSO. This is a byproduct of paper manufacturing. And uh, what they did was they placed it in a tank car. And I don't know exactly if it was forgotten about or what, but later on that month, uh, they shipped the tank car through uh, Kansas City Railroad and Illinois Central Railway to uh, Vicksburg, Mississippi. Now there was already 10,000 pounds of this uh, substance, dimethyl sulfoxide, in the tank car. And when it got to the uh, Vicksburg facility, they weighed it and discovered that this tank car was 10,000 pounds overweight. And since they had been work done on the tank car, they concluded that there, it was their belief that uh, the weight was due to the work that was done on the tank car. Uh, after it was weighed, the company Vicksburg Chemical pumped in uh, the remaining amounts of whatever they were supposed to have had in uh, the form of a substance called nitrogen tetroxide, uh, some type of uh, fertilizer or something. Um, the tank car was then shipped back through the railways back to Bugaloosa, Louisiana. Uh, they discovered that it was leaking maybe a few days after it arrived there. So they tried to offload it, but the uh, devices for offloading the tank car shut down because it detected that this was a highly poisonous toxin. So uh, the emergency system on it shut it all down. <clears throat> they were unable to offload it with that process. And um, so they were stuck there with a tank car that they couldn't offload. And I suppose that uh, moving it through the town, trying to get it away from the facility, would have been too dangerous. Um, over the years, I've been thinking about could there have been something else they did? And the only thing I concluded was that perhaps if they would have had a, a super tank car that they could have just rolled this tank car into, uh, they could have sealed it and probably moved it, but they didn't. So here's where things really start getting bad. Uh, because of the length of time that it had leaked and the fact that there was no way to offload it or a fear of moving it, I concluded that more than likely this, uh, everything that occurred with this release was all planned. Uh, there's a name for something that occurs in the morning and the afternoon with the wind, and an hour before daylight and an hour before dark, it'll stop blowing. The wind will quit blowing under general conditions. Uh, the wind will always blow to the northwest under normal conditions prior to a rain. So I'm pretty certain the idea was to uh, have this chemical released at a time when the wind was blowing to the northwest and, uh, you know, it, that, that wind was followed by rain. So if you timed this thing just right, you could have in the 
release process was handled by water. Uh, if you added water to this substance, it became highly volatile and it would pressure up. And so at uh, 4.45 in the afternoon of the October 23rd, they began, uh, they, well, they had started placing water to it prior to that, but at, at 4.45 that afternoon, the tank car erupted. Uh, there was a gentleman that was working there that I rode to Jackson to the court for my wife's deposition. And much of what he said to me about what occurred then is what got me uh, to start to put this whole thing together. He said that officials at the mill uh, were complaining to them about the direction of the wind when it initially released. And they, their response was that they couldn't control the wind. And so after a little while, the wind began to blow in the direction that they wanted it to. And everybody got happy there uh, who worked at the mill, the, uh, the officials there, the high ranks. Uh, the cloud lifted above the tree line and traveled in a northwesterly direction toward our home. Now, the plan out where we live, like I said, was rural. So the plan was to get this thing out there, uh, you know, uh, an hour before dark where the wind would quit blowing. And then when the wind would quit blowing, this toxic poisonous cloud would fall to the ground. Um, they, their plan more or less worked fine. You know, it was going to prevent the cloud from traveling everywhere and going into Mississippi and everywhere else. And this was going to reduce any liability that was left with them. But the only problem was that at the time the wind quit blowing and the area that it stopped for before it fell to the ground was over my home. And so this toxic cloud landed on my home. Um, we were made very sick and, uh, so we were in the hospital and all after that happened. Um, we were able to find some attorneys because, you know, that, that, that just destroyed everything we had. We were able to find some attorneys, uh, and the main reason for that was my wife didn't have any insurance. And I did, but she didn't, and we were needing medical aid. And so uh, we spoke to these attorneys, and uh, they uh, got us medical attention. And the next week, uh, they approached us and said, look, and uh, we're going to give you $10 million in four months, no questions asked, which I'm not certain why that was thrown in, but, you know, that, that was fine with us. If you don't mind me interjecting here, what kind of ailments did you sustain as a result of this cloud coming over your home? Uh, it, it, you know, it was more like what didn't we sustain because this this stuff, the uh, the nitrogen tetroxide was a, was a form of uh, poisonous gas that would uh, affect your breathing and all. And then the substance that was mixed with it was a byproduct of paper manufacturing. And it is known as a highly absorbent uh, substance. If you were to rub it on your toe, 30 seconds later, you would taste it on your uh, on your tongue. And so it carried the substance that it would, and anything that it mixes with the, uh, the absorbent properties, that substance, anything that's mixed with it increases the uh, toxicity of it. And so this thing, you know, everything was affected. Our breathing, uh, rashes, or fevers, chills. I mean, just about, you know, I've got papers, documents showing it, and it's just incredible. I mean, there's really nothing that it didn't affect. And uh, and so, you know, we, we were really bad off. In fact, they told us that they were going to settle this in four months, and it was something like six months later before we were able to get out of our sick bed and return back to the attorneys to speak to them about, you know, having our home replaced. <clears throat> and that's when this mess started about these attorneys wanting to create a class action lawsuit. And that kind of angered us, you know, naturally. Uh, we, we had heard that we were going to be done with this and we could return home. So we, we haven't been home in 20 something years. This, this thing in over 20 years. It, it's just a continual battle for these people. Uh, to conclude this matter in a manner by which they thought it was going to occur. Yeah, because uh, folks, I don't know, I don't, I'm sorry to interrupt you. There. No, that's fine, that's fine. I'm, folks, I don't know if, how many of you are aware the, the ramifications of you or anyone else being involved in a class action lawsuit. I don't know if you ever heard of anyone that's ever been involved in one, but 
Usually the only ones that benefit out of a class action lawsuit are the legal counsel that represent not just the people that they get to swallow the lie of a class action lawsuit, but the counsel that represents the company as well. I mean, the individual that gets involved on the plaintiff side of the class action lawsuit don't really get anything. And, uh, you know, and I remember you just saying, that, you know, they offered you $10 million at one point. What what became of that? Well, because of what actually occurred that this one and only cloud traveled over our home and landed on it, we were basically really the only ones that were affected to the extent that we were with it. So uh, the $10,000 was withdrawn. And uh, we were told that we were going to have to go through the process of uh, being deposed and, and a trial. Uh, as you stated there, um, the class action uh, signs people up, and these attorneys, they, you know, they drag this thing out for years and years and years, and they collect a pretty good little bit on every individual. But when they come to pay the individual, they, they have this thing that they'll say, you know, we've worked on your case for years. And then that's why, you know, people that are injured slightly or whatever usually don't get much of anything out of it. The, uh, the attorneys are trying to manipulate it in such a manner where uh, they are the ones that receive most of the money. Um, the, the $10 million was withdrawn. And, uh, and so the arguments with the attorneys began at that point. In 1997, we fired them. And by... The end of that year, we had already been placed in jail seven times, several times, threatened and everything else. And uh, they, be, they began threatening me with things that you know we're experiencing right oh, now. Back up a second. Back up a second. You say they threatened you with jail time because you were injured as a result of this this negligence on the <laughs> on the part of the paper mill and the uh, court system that threatened you with legal action. Right. Uh, what? Right. They, they told us that uh, everyone else didn't know what had happened and wasn't aware of where the cloud actually went. And they were going to formulate a class action. And if we tried to do anything to disrupt that, that they were going to have us placed in jail, take our children away from us and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And, and uh, they, they, they did. They did because I told them it was just going to have to be that way. But uh, every time that we got arrested for something, when we would appear at court, they would dismiss it and tell us to go home. They had no records of anything that happened. And right. inc incidentally, um, at, there was a point when I tried to go back to school and I felt a little better to get my law degree and actually got papers back stating that I was not a United States citizen. There was no history of me. And the only thing that was ever found uh, of me was when I signed for, uh, for when I signed up for military selective service. And that was the only history they had of me. That was the only thing that they weren't able to to touch. And so, uh, in at the end of and, and well, all through '97 and into '98, uh, the battles kept on. So sometime around the middle of 1998, we were informed that uh, they were going to kick us out and we would no longer be part of the lawsuit. And there was a part of me that was happy about that because the whole thing, you know, this was the first lawsuit I've ever been involved with and it just, just it wasn't nothing but trouble uh the thing was costing me more than I you know than, than it was worth and, and it has ever since then uh, my home was never replaced we were never helped with any medical uh aid after the uh, my wife's deposition you know they they were telling us we'd better be silent about our home and what happened and I you know I told my wife I said look you have to go on record you have to tell them about the home and once they found out that we knew about the home and everything, well, everything sort of changed. They got real angry. <clears throat> Wouldn't pay for our medical uh, expenses anymore. I mean, they just really, really turned turned on us. And uh, the, the interesting thing, when my wife gave this deposition, we were told that that was going to be the end of it. You know, they were, she was going to give the deposition, and that was going to be the end of it. And uh, so after the deposition, we were we were brought back home. Um, we returned to the law firm. A week later and uh, you know that, that this is when more talk about having to go to trial and stuff happened but we noticed that everyone with the law firm and all their employees all had brand new BMWs and yeah, so, yeah this 
this is kind of a telltale thing that you know it, you know getting, getting more into a personal part of this case i understand from talking to you before you know we agreed to do this show there's something that happened to a family member that kind of crossed the line in regards to uh, not just a court case, but a more of a sinister nature in, and in regards to your, I believe it, am I mistaken? Well, you were cutting in there, but I think you're referring to the death of my child. Then there was also uh, the death of my cousin, which I didn't addressed in a, in a video that I made here recently. Um, I think I can speed things up just a little bit here to get us to that point. Uh, I'd, li I'd like for everyone to know what occurred after we were told that we were not going to be involved in this lawsuit. And that was in mid-1998. In uh, September of that, in August of that year, the courts uh, accepted an $84 million uh, settlement offer from Vicksburg Chemical. That $84 million was placed on me alone. And rather than again, once more trying to aid us with our home or anything else we needed, they used that money to hire other attorneys and hold a class act, their class action lawsuit. Now, my family, because of that uh, offer being placed on me and the actions with my wife prior to that, my family was uh, in the lawsuit. I mean, we were definitely in it because we were the ones used to obtain the money. And so in early 1999, the court held their uh, class representation trial the brought people to represent the class and the jury returned with a negative finding they couldn't find any injuries with anyone else and so by law all all of the money from the lawsuit was placed on us it's all large it always has been but it's just angered everybody that much more um, in 1992 whenever I had filed these papers to try to get uh, go back to school to get a law degree uh, my cousin, and I've got papers, I've got all kinds of documents, I've got witnesses who, who uh, signed statements for me. My cousin was given a drink at the Mardi Gras parade uh, in the town of Bogalusa, after which he, sp he spit most of the drink out, but immediately began uh, staggering around. Now, the gentleman that gave him the drink took him and, and told everyone, because they were they began to get upset and ask him what he had placed in the drink. He uh, loaded my cousin in the car and said he was taking him to the hospital. Uh, they left the parade at 1020 that morning. And uh, they, the, the gentleman that was with him and my cousin arrived at our home nearly 5 o'clock. It might have been 445 that afternoon. And my cousin was cold and he was blue. And he had been deceased for several hours from what I, what I understand. Now, this gentleman was uh, the cousin of the sheriff. And he did this interstate transportation to avoid prosecution and you know it, it worked for them so uh so now we're uh, we're into 2000 and, and uh and two uh i had uh, since then acquired new attorneys uh in 98 because the judge told me that he would not work with me personally to get this matter he would only go through attorneys and so when i got those attorneys they were the ones who went after the class action trial and it failed so in 2000, they tell me that they're not going to represent me anymore. And in 2002, I get another letter telling me they're not going to represent me anymore. So I told them if there was any problem with it and they, they were undecisive about it, that they were fired. You know, I, I didn't want them messing with my affairs anymore. Um, and th that was in 2002. And so that was the same time that my, my cousin wound up dead. So uh, in 2005, I, uh, I filed papers with the uh, with the court on my own behalf and had been filing since 2001, uh, asking the court for a portion of our lawsuit settlement so we could get on with our life. Uh, it was denied. They came up with a story that our, 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 our discovery was incomplete and that we were part of some other uh, claim that got dismissed, and but that we were still going to get something ultimately from it. Uh, what actually occurred is that they have uh, been waiting for us to die because it's all in our name and they don't see ourselves getting it any other way. So in, uh, by, by, my daughter had two children and by 2010, she's telling me dad, you know, it would help if you would adopt the kids because if you adopted the children, then, you know, they would get a check off for you 
and it would help y'all out the raising. And so I didn't want to take her parental rights away, but after thinking about it and talking about it, we're all, you know, one family. And so we agreed to do it. And when I approached this attorney, um, she wanted to know any legal matters we were involved with. And I hesitated, but I had to, by law, uh, divulge anything that we were uh, connected to. And so she discovers what's going on with this lawsuit. Now, just uh, with the class action lawsuit, you'll see so-and-so versus so-and-so. Uh, if, it's, if it's a personal lawsuit, they'll just be the person's name and, you know, who, who the defending uh, parties are. And in, in, the, in the class action, they'll have the name of the person with the initials E-T-A-L, which means this person plus all these others as well. Um, on, on our papers, uh, it's clear you can see there's my name, my wife, our daughter, and there is no E-T-A-L after that. So, you know, the, the entire, this entire thing was placed on us. At the time that I adopted the children, 2010, the attorney... Uh, discovered what we were involved in. And, uh, and now the attorney we had prior to that, the one that wasn't going to represent him, he's now a state representative. And so uh, she, he can, he comes up with this bill, parental rights bill, to take the parental rights away from parents of the children. And I didn't realize it at the time, but the whole thing was a, a setup to murder my daughter. Um, in 2010, we adopted the children uh, I, I spent two years trying to get the adoption papers, and uh, they just, just the whole thing just kept dragging. <clears throat> the attorney hired some new employee at the office, and so I began speaking with them about, uh, you know, if they could find these papers that I needed. And one day she tells me, she calls me and says she found the papers, and evidently someone forgot to file it with the court. So she went and filed it with the court that I could probably get a copy in a few days, which I did that. Uh, in 2013, a gentleman comes up to my uh, door and tells me that my wife, uh, my daughter is uh, been struck by a car and she's in a ditch. Uh, they think she's bad off and, and they don't, you know, that, that they were just trying to let me know. So uh, I went to, uh, we called to try to find out what's going on and they had already taken her body to the, uh, to the hospital. Um, the story was, and, and, and when I left the hospital, the state troopers had just got there, and I asked him what happened. He said he didn't know. He, he was just called. And so she died about 6.30, and they didn't get her body to the uh, hospital about 8.30. And uh, what I found out was someone in a vehicle she was riding, which tried to, tried to I, I suppose they were going to try to kill her there, they struck her. And uh, knowing my daughter, I'm, I'm pretty certain that uh, – she figured if these people were threatening her life, she was going to threaten theirs. And she caused, and they caused, in the, in the fight that ensued in the car, they caused the car to wreck. It went through a ditch and, and flipped over. Uh, my daughter got out of the car, and uh, someone who I won't mention uh, witnessed the fact that uh, she'd been taken. She, I suppose she was arguing with the officers that were there she, uh, about what had occurred in the car. But she was grabbed and taken and brought into the brought down into the middle of the four way. There was a ditch there, and uh, she was placed over a drain. And uh, someone cut uh, a main artery in her leg and her arm, and she was held there till she bled to death. Um, the when the ambulance finally did arrive there about 8:15, 8:20, um, they got into it with the people there about why anyone didn't do anything about it and they were told that none of the phones work none of none of the radios were working <clears throat> uh the people at the the scene were the law enforcement the task force uh the uh, record to pull the car, car away first respond and uh, the newspaper so uh, everybody was you know they were able to put an ambulance for her um so you know you, you, this is terrible, but, but we got to move on now. I've got the kids that I need to try to take. And uh, didn't know what was going to come to light later on. So that was 2013. In 2016, uh, DHS, and, and you know, it, it's been a struggle since that time uh, to keep our home replaced. But, uh, my, uh, my stepdad 
left the grandchildren a million dollar life insurance policy, uh, a practically new mobile home and uh, three acres of land. But when he passed away, my stepbrother went to attorneys who discovered that he was involved with the lawsuit as well. And uh, they withheld the insurance policy. Children couldn't get it. Part of what's going on is a fear that I'll get money somehow or another, they're saying, to fight them. And they were they made it clear that they were going to keep us so broke that we would never be able to fight them. And so over the years, there's been a lot of these uh, arresting and bonding out and then just dismiss, dismissing the case. My wife still isn't given any form of medical aid. She's been denied everything. Uh, she used to work. But her and others that she could never work again, that she's disabled not for her not to even try. But the uh, the judge uh, that oversaw her uh, Social Security said that her uh, medical records were lost in a place and that they could never be found in that place where they were lost. But, you know, we, we've got the records, but nothing helps. And so uh, let's see. You know, oh, I'm, I'm at you. Know what you're telling me that. They denied your wife the Social Security uh, benefits that she's entitled to, and it's all coming down because of the system oh. pretty much railroading you folks every right. at every turn. And, you know, right. folks, this is what I've been talking about a lot over the last few years. You know, we have a government yeah. system that's pretty much out of control. I mean, we, you know, we're... We're promised in the Constitution due process of law, but, you know, this is not due process when the system is constantly, constantly doing everything to undermine we the people. It's time for us to get together and it's time for us to make sure that this doesn't happen to anyone else. And, Robert, uh, if anyone wants to help you, how can they get a hold of you? Because, you know... Folks, if there's an attorney out there that is willing to work pro bono and stay on top of this and don't capitulate, don't cave in, don't sell out, the uh, Marie family can really use your help. Go ahead, Robert. You know, uh, I've, I've got a lot of this stuff posted on uh, on my Facebook page, and uh, I've already been to the Supreme Court. You know, I, I laid this down in 1997 when I realized this thing's not going to stop. And hopefully we wouldn't die like they suspected because they began telling us that. You're going to be, don't bother us. Um, my, my, my argument with them was over the fact that they were stating that the substance that came out of the car was uh, nitrogen tetroxide. Uh, that alone would have been the substance that they were, you know, trying to trying to persuade people it was, saying that it mixed with water. <clears throat> nitrogen tetroxide doesn't mix with water. So that's how, uh, you know, we came to the conclusion that it was dimethyl suboxide that was actually in the car. And I finally got a bill of lading from the tank car that showed what, what was actually in it. Um, I, you know, this thing is just, it, it's impossible. The uh, nitrogen tetroxide came from the paper manufacturer, and we were told that we would not be allowed to bankrupt the world's largest corporations. Uh, talk going around, there was talk going around that uh, the paper manufacturer had $500 billion uh, of insurance, and uh, so it seems to be a, a deal between the attorneys and the corporation that if they pursued this class action and whitened everything about us, that they could protect the uh, 500 billion. Uh, the bigger problem here is what everyone's speaking about this new world order and stuff like this and uh, speaking about the Rothschild family and things like that. The, uh, the insurance company that, that had them insured was Lloyd's of London and Lloyd's of London is owned by the uh, Rothschild family. And so this thing gets, this, this thing gets really, really deep after a while. I don't know for what reason, perhaps it is that attorneys are uh, licensed by the state or perhaps they're licensed by the country, uh, and, 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 you know, as a whole, that uh, they really, you know, they just, they, they, they really have, there's, there's something there in the way of fear or, um, I don't know, they just, they really, I mean, it's just a, it's the weirdest thing. 
I, you know, it's kind of hard to describe, but they, uh, you know, when you first talk to them, they, they're, they're really, you know, that you can't be done this way, not in this country. We have a constitution. You, you have rights and, and it just goes on and on and on until they yeah. go and check into it and speak to someone. And then it turns into something. You know, that's the thing, you know, due process of law, it, it only, it only helps those that are guilty. Right. And, you know, right. the thing is, when you are innocent and you're standing up for your rights, they don't afford you the same due process of law. I mean, right. we've seen it before with our patriot brothers and sisters out in in Nevada and, and Oregon. Right. Yep. You know, the legal system is not representing <laughs> the people. And right. that's where we need to revamp our whole constitution to make it the way it was, the way it was originally written for we, the people, not right. corporations, not the lawyers, not the court itself, the people. Because there's a double standard in this country. When Hillary Rodden Clinton and Barack Hussein Obama and others in government can get away with anything and everything, but we, the people, can't get justice for ourselves and our family, when we are rightfully entitled to a settlement and yet they treat you like you're the criminal, like you're the bad guy, this is not the way law is supposed to work. But this no, certainly is, you know, this is a pretty much a blatant travesty and a miscarriage of justice. Yeah, this thing really goes deep into the Constitution. You know, I, I was supposed to have been secured in my home and personal items and effect. We lost everything. You know, uh, I look at I look at what occurred as uh, it was an unlawful seizure of my home because when them toxins landed in it and engulfed it with this uh, highly absorbent property, our, our home was done for. Everything was done for. I mean, that that was the end of it, you know. And uh, so, you know, getting back real quickly to what occurred after my daughter died in 2016, they arrived here at my home and they told me, uh, you know, your home is not adequate enough for, for you know uh, the children and all and uh i live in a mobile home and you know wa water is like our number one enemy and we got a lot of rain around here and so there was a, a an area by the by the back door that had a little hole in it and an area in the bathroom that had a little hole in it and i was told this was an endangerment to the child and a snake might come in or something so this was their initial reason for taking the children away um yeah. when i showed up at the DHS hearing, I began to understand what was going on. And, you know, I explained to him, I said, I've already been through this. I know what it's about. Uh, I'd rather not be put through this again. And uh, the, the attorney who was supposed to have handled the adoption for me immediately got up and she said, Your Honor, this is an incomplete adoption. <clears throat> and so she was unaware that I had spoke to one of her employees and got them to file the uh, adoption paper with the court and that I had a decree of adoption from the court uh, and you know I had raised the children since they were born formula and diapers and you know you love your grandkids they're, they're wonderful but the thing about it is uh, she had delayed the uh, adoption process so much that uh, when I called them I said look you know this whole thing was to try to get the children to be able to receive uh, an income on me so that, that you know it would help us raise them and she said, well, you just go over there and we'll call them and talk to them and you can go ahead and do it before you get the, uh, the adoption papers. Well, she didn't know at the time I had already had them. But what I've come to conclude about the uh, about DHS and their hearing, you know, and I'm just going to be blunt about this. Uh, she got the papers in 2010. The state came up with some kind of new program. The, the parental child deal was part of it. They didn't know how they were going to pay for administrative costs. 2013, my daughter's murdered, and they suddenly have a, a a plan to pay for administrative costs. And in 2016, uh, you know, they take the kids away. Now they, they take them because they want the parental right. With parental rights, whatever the children were supposed to get because of their mother now belongs to the state because of the parental right program. Um, I suspect highly that what was supposed to have occurred was. When she got up and told them that uh, it was an incomplete adoption, she would next, next uh, claim that I had been collecting a check on the children for a year and they weren't really mine. And so that was the way by which they were going to get rid of me too at that time. Since I had the decree of adoption, 
uh, six months later in, in, in a desperate fight for trying to figure something out, they had uh, the foster parent, which is a, a brother-in-law. The children are with my wife's sister. Uh, the same ones who paid for my daughter's funeral, who also were able to acquire a lot of property and things thereafter. And incidentally, they also visited the uh, island of Thomas down in the Caribbean. And I, I guess you might know what that could imply. Do you? I mean, well, off, you know, off, you know, offshore, uh, offshore, offshore bank account or something. I don't know. Yeah, Dwight has, you know, received some type of kickback somewhere. Yeah, you know, it's all a payout. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Well, kickbacks yeah. are a big thing in this day. Yeah. You know, but you know, Robert. Uh, before we go any further, man, my my condolences to you and your family for your losses, man. It's uh, it's not easy to to endure what you've endured, and you know it's entirely different when they don't die from natural causes. It is. And in this case, you know, I I can't understand why somebody has been brought to justice in regards to the deaths of these two individuals that are a very vital part of your family. And, right, and you know. Folks, again, if, if you're out there and you're watching this live broadcast, you know, the situation is the family, the Marie family can really use your help. They need your legal support. If you can represent them and not back down from these corrupt individuals, I'm just going ahead and call it like it is. I mean, they're they're being they're being labeled criminals when they're the ones that are the victims here and it's time for the marines to get the justice that they are entitled to i w i'd like to uh, i'd like to say something at this point you know i th this is this is horrifying and all but i, I want to state clearly that if it weren't for an understanding that god has blessed me with uh, in scripture that this would be something that i could have never handled I mean, I have the good Lord to thank and, and our Father in heaven for, for, for clearly, you know, making it understood what and how this all came to be and the purpose for it. My child is with everyone else who passes away in paradise, where all go. And, uh, you know, when this is all over, and the people, there's so much in scripture people don't understand. Eventually, none of us will recall any of this because in the Bible where it states that uh, all tears and, and sorrow will be wiped away and there'll be no more, uh, God God wipes away our memories of that. I mean, uh, this whole life, <clears throat> as much as people want to feel that God may not be there for him, he is, uh, and he's here for all of us. But the reason that these horrible things are allowed to happen is that God has to judge the people. He has to judge, and if he intervenes in what people do, then he wouldn't be judging us for the things that went on in our life. He would be judging us for what he did, and if he wanted that, he could have done that to begin with. And so, as horrible as some things are, you know, they they have to be. Um, yeah, when our when our prior to being crucified, the, you know, our Lord said, uh, "Father, if this cup could pass me, let it be," but but let it, you know, but not let it be your will. I, I think people uh, seem to believe that he was asking this for himself. But the only place I read of, uh, of cups in, in the Bible was the cup of wrath. Yeah. And that isn't that isn't going to fall on the Lord. That's going to fall on us, you know. And the, the only other thing I, I would say about that uh, is that nobody is going anywhere. When, the, when this is over with and we stand before God, it, it, the reason for it being allowed is all going to it's all going to be clear, you know. Uh, yes. Christ, Christ Christ said that himself when Pilate told him, you know, he he says I got the power to take your life, and he said, you know, you you're being allowed to do this. You have no more power than you know. Like I've always said, Robert, you know, it's it's one thing to to say in regards to the Bible, you know, there there's a time when we all will stand before God, right, and it's the reason we're standing before God that it's going to be the vital question here. Are we standing before God to get 
his punishment or are we going to stand before God to receive the reward that we earned in our lives here on earth right. for following his word? It's, you know? it's, an, it's an incredible thing. You know, uh, eternal life would be a wonderful thing, but the Bible actually does state that uh, he comes with, he bears gifts. And so, uh, you know, and I, I'm pretty certain that those of us who do believe in the Bible and, and, uh, and uh, you know, what understanding we have of it, that uh, these things were, were, were coming. They were coming. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so we're here now. And, and, and you know, I've got friends who uh, who don't really believe, but, you know, that's the whole thing about Father. He, he gives us that free will, and, mm-hmm. and I love him for that, you know, and, and I do. But uh, he, he's never going to forsake his children. And, uh, you know, and, right. And I appreciate you taking the time to accept my invitation to come on to this program, Robert. And, uh, you know, the invitation is always open if you would like to come on. If something new develops that, that you would like to share, uh, just feel free to contact me and I'll bring you back on. I, you know, it's been an honor and a privilege to have you on as a guest. I, I enjoy being here. You know, the, the only thing I'd like to conclude real quickly with is that I filed with the Supreme Court of the United States and gave them all the information. I have documents on everything that we discussed tonight, and uh, they denied the petition. And so I uh, filed for a rehearing, and they denied it as well. And uh, the latest thing I've done was contact Jeff Sessions of the Justice Department. It seems that something's going on around here, which I'm not privy to just yet. Um, the, uh, the the filing with the court was an odd thing. I got a call from the clerk who was uh, complaining about the fact that uh, it was a uh, most a petition for mandamus and, and not a, a a petition for a cert. A cert is when you lose a case and you try to get the court to review it. A mandamus is when you try to get the higher court to order the lower court to do its duty, what it's supposed to do. And so you know he, he was upset that it was the latter and. Uh, he, he was they were hoping it was a cert because a cert can be dismissed uh you know denied you know real easy and that's not what we had there but uh but other than that i mean that's where we are right now i'm 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 writing to the justice department and mr sessions to try to stop these people from doing what they're trying to do they're trying to get me incarcerated now and i'm you know i'm certain that uh if that happened i probably wouldn't be along uh around very long because you know that this whole thing is it's incredible uh, with the with the hundreds of millions and possibly billions that, that the documents say they saw it, uh, it's incredible that they can't give my family enough for us to you know pay for the home that they destroyed and and seek medical attention and get on with our life and it's it's terrible it's just a terrible thing I'm so happy to have been on here and uh, and again I want to thank you for inviting me I, I really enjoyed it it's been a pleasure. And uh, again, you know, feel free to come back and contact me at any time. I'll be more than happy to bring you back on. I appreciate that. God bless. Thank you. God bless you, brother. Well, folks, there you have it. You know, we have a situation, a American citizen who, through no fault of their own, became a victim of corporate America and the greed that... uh, they've endured and the harsh treatment and the outright miscarriage of justice. And folks, um, if you're out there and you are someone who can represent the Marie family, feel free to get in contact with with me by email at angrypatriottexas at gmail.com or you can send me a private message here on Facebook And I'll put you in contact with the Marines and hopefully we can get them the justice that they deserve. Well, folks, it's been a pleasure to do this live broadcast today. And I hope that the things that were discussed on this program are things that anger you to the point where you want to help right this wrong. God bless you. God bless our troops overseas in harm's way. May God bless my fellow veteran, patriot, Christian, and citizen brothers and sisters here in America and around the world, folks. But most importantly, may God bless America. Angry Patriot, out.